Hey YouTubers, my name is Heather Archer, also known as Thriving with Heather. And on today's video, I wanted to take some time to look at what it might take to create a sacred workspace at home. So I will be doing a follow-up on what it looks like to create a sacred workspace if you're not at home. But for this particular episode, I would like to focus in on what are some tools and strategies that we can cultivate in our homes to create and reclaim our sacredness at work? Why is it, first of all, important to have a sacred workspace? Well, um, our work is definitely something that consumes us as Americans, in particular, folks who uh, live and work in Western society usually uh, have very demanding jobs, right? Um, and so being able to find moments of sacredness throughout the day, um, throughout our work day in particular, to restore and, uh, and replenish our spirits is really important. Because when we're able to cultivate and carve out a space for sacredness at work, what ends up happening is we're also able to be more productive, right? Because we're able to access different areas of joy and well-being. And when we're well, it actually improves the quality of our work. So I definitely want to shift that narrative that we have to be suffering in order to be working hard. So um, if you're watching this video and you're like, well, why do I need a sacred space at work? I would say like if you're a human being, you always need to have access to a sacred space. And it doesn't matter if you're at work or if you're not, right? So um, really cultivating what does a work life look like for me in particular, as opposed to what the systems um, in society have said um, is more of a of a of a of a structure that's considered professional, right? So um, I'm going to flip some narratives on on um, its head today. So, for example, there are there is a workspace that I have that's more related to uh, the t traditional desk model. But I also um, have um, another desk that I use that's more of a cycling desk. Um, so just showing those differences. I also like to use beanbag chairs a lot of times, um, especially if I'm doing more reflecting and processing work. I try to be as comfortable as possible. Um, so those are some of the those are some of my initial um, how to's regarding um, what it means to create a sacred space at work. So the first thing I want to talk about is you should have some kind of a singing bowl or some kind of a sound instrument. If you don't have an instrument, that's fine. We can actually use the sound that we make with our bodies, such as clapping. <coughs> clapping can be really cathartic and can support with um, just kind of clearing out stagnant energy. A big part of creating a sacred workspace, especially when you're at home, is to create energetic boundaries, right? Because you might be on different Zoom calls or, or different webinars that might be triggering. Not all calls, right, are going to give you or feed your spirit. And you're going to need to find a way to reclaim your energy, especially if you're working at home, right? Because you only have the one space. And so constant energy clearing um, is, is critical to being able to thrive while working from home. Now, another great tool for energy clearing is a singing bowl. So this is a crystal quartz one that I have, it has an ohm symbol on it, um, but also like you can have a Tibetan bowl. Um, it's really not about the actual type of instrument. Um, it's just really being able to clear out the energy or clear out your space with sound. So. Why sound? There's so many reasons why sound. I'll actually put a an article, I'll list that in the description so you can read up a little bit more on it. But essentially what I would say is that um, in terms of sound and why it's so important for space clearing in particular, is it does break up stagnant energy. It does severely help to reduce um, like stress and anxiety, all of those kind of work-related triggers that we can experience sometimes. Taking out even five minutes of your day to reset, right? Or even before you go on your next call, 
that you're, you're clearing the space, you're clearing your energy, you're taking that moment of mindfulness. Um, and the one thing about singing bowls that are really cool, so I'm somebody who, who has suffered from high functioning anxiety. It's something I still st suffer with. And so singing bowls and sound healing has been really supportive for me in my journey. And it's also really helped me to continue to cultivate and navigate a work-life balance. Because um, if you're somebody who has high anxiety, the idea of quieting your mind in meditation might sa seem really scary and also boring, right? And so one thing about the singing bowls is it gets you into that meditative state quicker. And it also does so in a way that uh, puts your body a little bit more at ease if you're more likely to suffer from anxiety at work. So that's the first thing I want to talk about is being able to clear your space with some sound, right? So if you don't have access to the singing bowls, remember we talked about clapping. That is also a way. Um, toning is another thing that you can do. So even like chanting. So if we look at this ohm symbol, even if we we take out some time to, to chant ohm, right? So ohm. So just doing that, even that one ohm, did so much to center my body, right? So if you were to do three repetitions of ohm in lieu of a singing bowl, that is restoring your body and restoring your space with sound, right? Remembering that you are your own sacred space, okay? So that's the first thing I want to talk about. Now, the second thing that I want to talk about is I got my little tea, right? Got to get the tea. As I give you all the tea, I got to show up with the tea as well. So uh, having access to tea, right? I am a notorious coffee drinker, okay? On a good day, I drink tea all day. That being said, um, when I feel the most sacred and the most in balance and alignment, I will say it's with a cup of tea. It's a great way to ingest some really yummy herbs. Um, so what I did in particular is I'm, I'm drinking a, um, a hibiscus cannabis infused tea from uh, the brand Kyoko. Love that brand. Um, some days, look, some days it's a tea with cannabis kind of day, y'all. All right. Just keeping it real. Um, or it's also, I also have regular hibiscus tea um, on the days when I'm not um, supported with a little bit of cannabis infusion. Fusion. I also, though, have something, uh, I have a root called ashwagandha, right? So look at the, at the description and you'll kind of see more about that root. But ashwagandha is really, really great to regulate your nervous system. Um, it is a, an Indian Ayurvedic root, really, really good for reducing anxiety and stress. Okay, so um, I sip on my, and also I have, I have my honey in here as well. So I put some honey in the tea. Um, I'll also put in some flower essences as well. So flower essences are a, um, they're a type of, they're actually a type of, um, okay, scratch, bop, 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 bop. And so to actually crank it up a notch even a bit more, I'll take my tea, right? And I already put my ashwagandha root in there, but I'll even kind of to turn it up a bit more and I might put in some flower essences. So right here, this is the olive flower essence um, from Bach Flower Essences. Um, you just want to make sure that when you put flower essences in your tea, that you do so when like the water's not boiling because then it can reduce the um, potency of the of the flower essence if the water's too hot. So what are flower essences? Flower essences are basically just as the name says, right? They're the essence of flowers. So if we really believe, and you know, as the indigenous stewards of our land have taught us, every single plant put on this earth has a purpose and a reason. And a lot of these plants that are around us on a daily basis are so healing for our spirits and for our mind and our bodies. And so taking that particular mindset 
um, each planet or each, sorry, each plant has a, has um, a unique essence to it. So for this, the olive, um, the olive plant is all about energetic re revitalization. So really great for working, right? So if you just kind of need a energetic boost and you don't want to take on like a second cup of coffee, try to like infuse some flower essences into your routine. The one thing I would say about flower essences is like, don't expect for it to just kind of work overnight. Um, it does take some time to, to get the flower essences um, for you to feel the difference, right? It's, and it's not like a jolt. It's kind of like a subtle difference. You're like, oh, I was really struggling with that particular emotion, but I'm not feeling it as much, you know? So it, it's very subtle. It happens with time. Nothing's a quick fix. And all of the things that I share, I just want y'all to keep in mind that they're done in, in, in partnership with each other, right? So we don't just do the one quick fix and we're, we're done and we have sacredness at work. This is an integrative process. Um, and so it's going to take time for you to integrate and you might start off with the one thing and then you keep adding and you keep adapting. And that is the key to cultivating any kind of sacred practice. All right. So step two for creating a sacred space at work is your is to have a cup of tea with some different herbs. And then um, my next step is, you see those flowers there? See that bouquet of flowers? Um, I'm really big about making sure that I have access to fresh flowers and that it's something I'm able to appreciate. So I'm very much about beauty and I love to surround myself with beautiful things. And surrounding myself with, or like having a bouquet of fresh flowers by my desk, it's just so cathartic and it really does support me with kind of reclaiming my sacredness. Um, on that note, I'd also say plants, right? So I do make sure that I have plants around. I have a couple others. Um, making sure that you surround your, your space with living things, right? So we are in this era of technology, right? But we still need to make sure that we're connected to the plant kingdom, all right? So creating your sacredness at work also um, does look like making sure that you surround yourself with living things, okay? Um, next thing that I would say is I, um, I keep a reflexology mat underneath my desk. Uh, to just kind of step on from time to time. It's best with, with these reflexology mats. It's best if you stand on them. You stand on them for five minutes. It feels kind of weird and uncomfortable, but um, what they do end up supporting with is kind of like balancing out your energetic meridian system. Uh, so, so that is, you know, super important as well. And then my last tip on creating a sacred space at work is to ensure that you keep finding moments to return to your breath. And so that includes creating um, rituals throughout your day to just check in with your breath. That might mean that you need to even put a reminder on your phone. And if so, go ahead and get that done. But essentially what you should be doing is creating opportunities to um, to really restore yourself. And so I'm going to leave you with a breathing practice that I like to do. It's called the 444 breath. So essentially the 444 breath, you breathe in for the count of four, hold for the count of four, and out of your nose for the count of four. So you can do that 444 breath. I usually do it four times. And so what's great about this is you could do this with your eyes open or closed. So even if you're like in a stressful meeting, you could even do the 444 breath. So, so yeah, I just did it, right? So I, there might be like this awkward pause right on Zoom that you might have for a second. But um, yeah, you could just, you know, restore yourself whenever you need to to reclaim your sacredness at work with the 444 breath as well. So I hope you liked these tips. I hope you enjoyed these tips. If you do like, if you got something out of this, if this video kind of helped you to shift your thinking in any way, if you could give, give it a like uh, and subscribe and share and share all the love and share all the, all the, all the goodness around workplace well-being, right? Let's be well at work and thank you for thriving with me. Peace.